Hi students. I'm ready to talk to you about Lesson 75. This is a watershed lesson, like scientific notation that we covered last time. This is a lesson that is going to be important to you for many, many lessons to come. We're going to build on this concept for a long time. And the abbreviated title that I'm going to give it, there's this, two, John Saxon wrote too, too long of a title. We don't need to write that much. We're going to talk about something called the slope-intercept method of graphing. And what slope-intercept means is that we're going to you learn a special format and a shorthand method for graphing lines. So that's what we're talking about here is graphing lines. Let me just give you a quickie review. Sometimes lines are really simple. Like we might have a formula that says x equals 3. And we can easily graph that. We just go to 1, 2, 3 on the x-axis. And we know that no matter what y is, x will always be 3. So we can graph it accordingly. Simple, right? Or we might say y equals minus 4. And if y equals minus 4, that would always look like this. We'd go to minus 4 on the y-axis, and we'd say that all of these points are in that line. All right? So for a straight horizontal or a straight vertical line, the equation of a line will be very simple. But for all the other lines that have some angle to them, we're going to learn a very special format. Y equals, oh my gosh, I wrote it wrong, MX plus B. All right? What this format of a line will tell us is that for any points X and Y that fall on this line, there will be a constant and then a number here that will be very helpful for us in graphing. B I don't know why they use the letter B, it makes no sense. We'll always refer to this constant though as the y-intercept. This is the place where our line crosses the y-axis, okay? And you'll see that's a very, very helpful tool. But B is always the y-intercept. The sign matters, that's part of the y-intercept. The sign and the constant are what we call the y-intercept. So I'll circle those two. M is what we call the slope. This will tell us the steepness of the line, going up or coming down. Remember that a positive slope goes up, a negative slope goes down. And you'll see on the next page, on page 307, they draw a nifty picture with little cars. It will always help you remember whether it's positive or negative. If we know the slope and the y-intercept of a line, it's very easy to graph it. And that's what we're going to learn how to do in this lesson. So let me flip to my next page. Just pretend I'm erasing the whiteboard right now. All right. And let's take a very simple start to this. Example 75.1 says find the y-intercept. <clears throat> Excuse me. Find the y-intercept of the line whose equation is y equals 3x minus 5. All right? And what we said was that this constant and the sign hanging off are what we call the y-intercept. So that's all you need to do for the first problem is just identify that. Um, for example, 75.2, look in your books on page 307. And it says, find the y-intercept of the line shown. So you can see, you simply look. Here, I'll move my book so you can see it. You simply look. It says, find the y-intercept of the line shown. So you simply look at the line, and you look at the point where it crosses the y-intercept. Well, it's right there. And that is, ne that is positive 5. So the y-intercept of the line is positive 5. Easy, right? Now, here's the picture I was telling you about. Slope. The slope is the steepness of the line. Positive slopes are going up the hill, and if you imagine this little car in your head going up the hill, then you'll remember that that is a positive slope. It says here, remember that the, um, the little dude always comes from the left-hand side. He's going up the hill, so that's a positive slope. If the line makes the little dude go downhill, then it's a negative slope. 
So if you can just burn this little picture into your head, and most people find that quite easy, the little dude going up, the little dude coming down, positive and negative, then that will make it a lot easier for you to remember in the future. All right, the other thing that I want to tell you about our cool formula, remember this is the y-intercept. Sorry, that's the, uh, I'll abbreviate that as y-intercept, and this is the slope. We're going to talk a little bit more about the slope, but we talk about, we can break the slope down. It's, it can be thought of as a fraction, as the rise over the run. Okay, so let me show you a picture of what that would look like. Let's look at example 75.3. I'm going to move my book here because it's really much easier so that we can look at the same picture and it's drawn properly. Find, um, it says find the equation of the lines in these figures. Well, I want to start with this one and I want to talk not so much about the y-intercept. We can easily see the y-intercept is negative too. I want to talk about the slope of this line. We measure it as the rise over the run always Calculating that rise is going up, run is going to the right, always to the right. So let me show you in this example how we would calculate it. The rise, would we would, calculate, we would identify two clear points that cross exactly at the corners of the grid as whole numbers. That's key. The next thing is we measure up how many steps as the rise. One, two. See, it takes us two um, jumps up to get from this point to this point. And then the run is how many, how many units we move to the right. And in this case, it's one, two, three, four. All right? So in this, this line has a slope that rises two units and runs four units. So in this case, we said the rise was two units and the run was four units, so the slope of our line is one half. Is it positive or negative? It's positive. I will show you in just a second what it looks like to have a negative slope, and those are a little bit different. Let me keep it here, and let's look at the other picture in this example. Um, so we, I want to look at this one. Now notice, this was going uphill, so we knew it was positive. Here, our little car would be running downhill. So this is going to have a negative slope. And what that means is we move from one point to the other. We're not going to be... We, okay, let me start with this. We always start with the point on the left-hand side because the run always goes to the right. If we have a negative slope, we'll notice that we don't actually rise. We sink, and that's okay. In this one, we sink one two, three units, and then we run one, two units to the right. So let me show you what that looks like. If we have a positive slope, then we calculate the slope as the rise over the run. If we have a negative slope, what I like to think of it as, as the, is as the sink over the run. We still always calculate our run by measuring to the right, but with a negative slope, we have a negative rise, which I call a sink. And we measure the steps down and then the steps to the right. So let me show you one more time over here on our picture. We have a sink on this one, so we go down one, two, three, and then we go over two. So in this example, our slope would be equal to negative three over two. And that would be the slope of that second line. Um, just to remind you, this is example, let me label this so you can figure it out a little bit more. Example 75.3, this is the, the one on the right, and this is the one on the left. I did them in opposite order because I wanted you guys to see the positive slope first. And then our y, we simply look at where the line crosses the y-axis. It's negative 2 on this one, and it is is positive 3 on this one. So then to write the equation of the line, we'd write y equals 1 half x minus 2. That would be the equation of the line on the right in example 75.3. And here, 
we would say y equals minus 3 halves x plus 3. Sorry, that really had to get squeezed in here. Make sure you guys can see it. Alrighty, so calculating our y is simply a matter of looking at the graph. Counting our, calculating our m is using these two formulas, deciding whether we're going uphill or downhill, and then calculating by counting, and then plugging those values into our format. Right here is all you need to do to solve these problems. And then what they do is they teach you how to take an equation and um, do the graphing. We don't have to plot our points anymore in those little tables. Let's look at an example. 75.4 says graph the line y equals 3 over 5x plus 2. So simple, you guys. First thing we do is we consider the y-intercept. We go to positive 2 on the y-intercept. All right, so that's our first point. Then we use the slope. Second, I'm not, I'm going to run out of space here. Shoot, let me draw it over again. I don't want to confuse you with a messy picture. Um, 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 y equals 3 fifths x plus 2. Okay, this is what we're going to graph. Let me draw a big one, put lots of points on it. I think that'll do it. So we start with our y-intercept. That always comes first. Plot y-intercept. That's our first step. So we go to positive 2 on the y-intercept. Boom! There it is. All right? Then we use slope to count the rise over the 